Hey guys, Happy New Year. Yes, we're back. It's the Fanjo Series 2, Episode 1. We've got loads of stuff lined up over the next few weeks and months. But before we get all over excited, here's a fun look back at Series 9, courtesy of Jake Yap. Bang! We are off! It's a battlefield and there's a biplane! Oh wow, it's World War War! No, that was a laser gun. It's the future! No, that's a bow and arrow. Okay, we're obviously on the planet Nonsenso and there are hands coming out of the ground and oh dear, they're about to attack a sweet little boy, but here's the doctor. He'll help. What's your name, little boy? Davros! What the wow! Now what? Oh, no big deal. Clara's just noticed that the planes have stopped in midair. It's Tony Basil, aka The Master, aka Oh Missy, You So Fine. That song was scary enough in the 80s, thank you. She's got the doctor's confession dial, which is like his last will and testament, but looks like a travel compact, which I guess is what he does. The Doctor is doing an open mic comedy spot in medieval Essex, which looks really rough, like Essex, but they all end up in a space station, except wait, it isn't, it's an invisible planet, and just relax, but it's the planet Scarrow. Here is the central dilemma. If you had the opportunity to travel back in time and kill a despot when they were a child, could you do it? Oh, no problem, says Dr. Hardnut, zapping back with the pointy end of a Dalek, aiming it at the kid and shouting, EXTERMINATE, in a Scottish accent, which is much more frightening than a Dalek. Meanwhile, there's some guy who looks like he walked into an electric fence called Colney South, named after the popular area in Norfolk. And now, at Missy's urging, Clara is inside a Dalek. Look, if a stranger tells you to get in a Dalek, don't do it, kids. And now Davros and the Doctor are laughing like a pair of old fools. <laughs> <laughs> Davros is dying and makes a classic joke about the Doctor not being a good Doctor. Ah, oh, you had to be then. There. Whatever. It's all banter and Davros steals some Doctor juice, but the Doctor knew because of course he did. He's the Doctor, but he talks about mercy and then he gets Clara out of the Dalek. Just say no kids though. Lesson learned, yeah? Meanwhile, it's episode three and we are mining under a lake with a nuclear reactor in 2119 and it's haunted. Jeez, have some ideas for once, guys. While we all go and Google the bootstrap paradox, you can't pull yourself up by your own bootstraps, they run around in some tunnels dodging ghosts until we see who's behind it. A guy called the Fisher King, who's quite scary, except his voice sounds like Daddy Pig off of Peppa Pig. You guys don't have a two-year-old. Okay, wrong crap. Meanwhile, the bloody Vikings <laughs> have smashed the Doctor's X-ray specs. Today's weather mainly dry with some showers, and in the north a good chance that a big Odin will appear in a cloud and put people in a juicer. I could never be a big Odin, but I am a little poor. And hang on, what's the name off of Game of Thrones is there? And sad, because they've accidentally declared war on one of the deadliest races in the galaxy, the Maya. The Doctor finds their Achilles eel, powering weapons with electric eels, which is ironic, since the baddies look like tinned lampreys. Blech. The Doctor starts banging on about his face again. Now he knows why he has a face like that. And he says, immortality is everyone else dying. You're depressed, mate. You should see a doc. Nah, never mind. Meanwhile, Mrs. Game of Thrones, whose name is Ashilda, is a hybrid, okay, whatever. And she does voices. You should see her, Kermit the Frog. And now she's Dick Turpin. She sacked up with the beast off of Beauty and the Beast and then nearly kills Rufus Hound, which seems a bit harsh, but changes her mind because she's loved him ever since he dressed up as Cheryl Cole that time. Doctor Who returns to his TARDIS and forlornly plays his electric guitar, looking for all the world like I imagine Tony Blair does nowadays, until Clara comes back in with a photo with a shielder in the background. What can this mean? It, what, what is she? Stay tuned. Meanwhile, there's a Zygon invasion, not as in Saigon in the Vietnam War. The Doctor titivates the fronds of a Zygon control polyp while we look away. It's a family show, Capaldi, okay? But everyone has an alien double and it's a bit messed up, but it comes down to Clara. You have two Osgood boxes in front of you. It's time to play deal or no deal. Would you like to swap? The Doctor gives a truly amazing and passionate speech about the futility of war, which has everyone raving online and in the press as a seminal soliloquy. It's positively Shakespearean and so very like Noel Edmonds. Meanwhile, it's episode nine, which is Peep Show with a thing called the Sandman that looks like something you'd find in your cat litter tray and is every bit as evil. It's all very good and stuff, but let's get back to the main narrative of the series, episode 10. As Childa has gone raven mad in Diagon Alley and Riggsy is back. Ah, oh, Riggsy. <laughs> what? No idea. Previous series? He was, yeah. He's got a tattoo! Oh, that is classic Riggsy, isn't it? What a legend he is. And it's counting down to his death because some two-faced woman has dropped dead. You'd think she'd have seen it coming. And now Ashilda is going to kill Riggsy with a raven, but it's Sayonara Clara, as it turns out she's taken one for the team. No lie, it's not one of those rubbish episodes where you think they've died and then they haven't. She is dead, bro. 
And now Ashilda is in the Doctor's bad books for real. Episode 11, and it's the most depressing director's cut of Groundhog Day ever, ever, ever. Taking 4.5 billion years to unfurl, and it might be my favourite episode ever. Meanwhile, it's episode 12, and we are racing to a climax, so we go to freaking Gallifrey all my days. And the question is, what is the hybrid? Half Dalek, half Time Lord. I mean, what kind of drunk Christmas party made a Dalek and a Time Lord think that was a good idea? Ah. Dalek trundle of shame next morning. The Doctor tries to save Clara from episode 10, which he sort of does, but he has to go to the end of the universe for another chat with a Shilder who's been passing the time with chess. Honestly, why do these people never pack a phone with Flappy Bird or something? A Shilder now wants to be called me, which makes writing dialogue rather tricky. Are you talking to me? Are you talking? Yes, he's just over there. And the series ends with the Doctor back in the diner in Utah from way back, and his memory of Clara has been erased. And she and me, as in not me, are off to a different TARDIS, and and to be honest, it's all too hard to explain properly. You should really just watch it. No, oh, it's not that complicated, Jake. But if you do feel like you need a bit of guidance, then be sure to check out our Series 9 and Christmas discussion shows right here. Now, it's time for our first cosplay of the week of 2016. Congratulations to Robert, age five. Pictured here in his amazing seventh Doctor cosplay. Awesome work. And of course, if you have a cosplay or anything else you'd like to share, tweet at DWTheFanShow or email us at DWTheFanShow at BBC.com. Finally, here's some of our favourite videos this week in our YouTube annotation attack. Next week, game unboxing reviews will be going through the Doctor Who Easter eggs in Lugger Dimensions. It's a bit early for Easter, isn't it? It's only January.